I wanted to talk a little bit about the death of your frat brother because yeah. that's uh, something that's actually really important and really a valuable conversation. Um, he was, I mean, tell a story, tell a story. All right. Yeah, sure. So, um, I wasn't even prepared for you to I ask know. me that, but no, that's, that's okay. Sorry. Too. So that was a couple of years ago. It's, we're coming up on the two year anniversary. Was it two years? Okay. December 2nd will be, um, when it, December 2nd was the day it happened. I think December 4th was the day he passed like officially. Um, but it's coming up on two years, basically, um, at TC and J with the whole, whenever we would have parties or get togethers, you know, we would have two brothers that were designated drivers for the night. And there was basically a list and you go through the list and like whoever's t- like turn it is, you have to drive that night. You're not drinking, um, you're driving. Exactly. Because like, it's not like TC and J is not like a lot of campuses where um, everything's in a walkable distance. Like I would say the house that we were having people at that night is probably like, I don't know, maybe a, m- a little less than a mile away. I don't know the exact um, distance, okay. but you know, it would be a pretty long walk or whatever. Um, basically he's doing, does he was a designated driver that night. I was in his car that night. He brought me to the party. Um, whatever we go home. Um, and basically in the morning, um, at like three or four in the morning, the cops come to the, to our main fraternity house, knocking on the door saying, you know, there's been an accident that was involving some of the people that came from here. Um, last night we're trying to identify the people, um, so they so the cops came that night. Yeah. So they okay. came. So I would say the accident happened around two in the morning. They came around like four or five in the morning to the house. Damn. I'm not exactly sure how they traced it back to that house or whatever. Um, but every, whatever they came there and we find out that there was an accident and, um, you know, at, at like nine in the morning, you know, someone sends a message out, says, you know, Mike, his name is Michael Sott. Um, Mike was driving last night, got into an accident. We don't know who was in his car or anything like that yet. Um, but we, we don't know where this kid, Anthony Galante was. We didn't know where he was. We didn't know where this kid, Ryan Moore was and his girlfriend. And that's all we knew at that time. No, they hadn't came back to their rooms that night or their houses. Um, so, um, we end up finding out that Mike is at, um, the trauma center in, Trenton, um, me and a couple of my friends drove down there and we ended up meeting up with like half our fraternity was at that hospital that morning. As soon as we found out where he was, um, we all like arrived at the same time, but we all found out around the same time. Um, so basically to make things short, um, Mike was hit by, was hit by a drunk driver that night while he was a designated driver head on. The person was going 80 and a 45 or in a 40. Um, hit him head on, was trying to go around another car into oncoming traffic. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you gotta be drunk to do something like that. Like, that's just insane. Hits them head on going 80 miles an hour. Um, a couple days later, Mike ends up passing away. Um, there was a couple other people in the car. Anthony Galante, um, was in a coma for a couple months. Um, Ryan Moore, was in a coma for, for a few months. Um, God, I didn't even know that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think they were both medically induced because comas, because they were in such bad shape. Like I know Ryan specifically, um, he broke his hip, his femur, um, his neck was broken. Oh my God. Um, just crazy amounts of damage, like all over. Um, There was another kid named Matt. He was in the car. He luckily, I don't know, he just broke his arm and he had a concussion. He wasn't too bad. Ryan Moore's girlfriend was in the car. She had a concussion um, and some, some, I don't know, just trauma. It wasn't anything specific. Um, But, I mean, that was just like a really tough time for a lot of us at that time. I mean, like that's like a week before finals. Um, You know, that hit us all super hard. You know, Mike was such a good guy. He would always go out of his way to do things for people. Um, he was always that, that person that would tell you how, you know, how much he appreciated you and, you know, what you meant to him and stuff. Um, and that was just such a crazy time. And, um, you know, I just remember um, the whole school really came together around that time. We had like a vigil that I would say maybe 
you know, a couple hundred to a thousand people showed up to this vigil that we had. And we had um, some of Mike's closest friends speak at it. Um, we didn't really know if Ryan and Anthony and some of these other guys were going to be okay. Um, and it was just, you know, such an emotional time for, for me and for a lot of people. Um, and, uh, it was just crazy, but the school TCNJ really, really, really stepped up to the plate for all of us. Um, they provided like grief counseling and they'd like, you know, reach out to our professors and kind of like told them what was going on. But that was like national news, really. Like yeah. that was all over. Um, so a lot of people, everyone pretty much knew what was going on. Um, but yeah, man, I was, that's crazy that you bring that up. I was just thinking about that cause it's coming up on two years of that happening. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll never forget Mike. He was such a good guy. Um, I was in his car that night and that's what makes it so crazy. Like it could have been anyone in that car. It could be anyone. And that's really why we have to emphasize like how important it is to, pre to prevent drunk driving and things like that. Um, but yeah, man, just a, just a crazy time.